if you are learning algebra, and that could be within, let's say, a pre-algebra course or some other uh, course like Math 101, if you're learning algebra within a math course, this is something you definitely need to know, i.e. to be able to handle a problem like this without the aid of a calculator. So we have a negative square root times another negative square root. How do we simplify this? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to uh, cover here in just one second. But if you know how to do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain exactly how to uh, solve this problem and what you really need to know to master this in algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, we have negative square root of 8 times negative square root of 40. What is this all equal to when it's all said and done? Well, hopefully you came up with this answer right here. 8 times the square root of 5. That's This would be considered uh, the correct answer. Now, if you got something different, you probably, assuming you were on the right path, you probably just didn't finish out the problem. But you'll see here in a second as I kind of explain this uh, problem. But if you got this right, that is excellent. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face in A+. Plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about square roots. They might even take you out to lunch or dinner. If I were you, I would just be like, hey, listen, don't take me out to lunch or dinner, but the next time you need a uh, math tutor, make sure you hire me for like, let's say $20 per hour, something like that. That would be outstanding. Now, uh, for some of you out there, just bringing up math tutoring, right? Uh, you might be wondering, how much do uh, math tutors make? Well, it ranges if you are like really, really good in math. If you know what you're doing and, you know, you could, you know, actually help someone one on one. That is a fantastic way to earn a little side income. But uh, great math teachers, uh, math tutors, excuse me, can earn, you know, very little per hour. But top notch uh, tutors that are really high in demand, people with the degrees and, and teach, it can make up to well over $100 per hour. So if that motivates you to learn math, then that is excellent as well. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's get into this problem and stop talking about math tutoring. But uh, let's see what we need to do in order to simplify the situation here. Okay, so the first thing we need to recognize is that the square root of 8, negative square root of 8 times uh, negative square root of 40, these are two numbers. This is a number, okay? Don't let the square root part uh, kind of bother you here for a second. This is a negative number, all right? And we're multiplying it by a negative number. So a negative number times a negative number is what? Hopefully, you answered positive, right? So just kind of stand back for a second and let's just deal with these negative um, signs right now. A negative times a negative is positive. So we know our answer is going to be positive. So we could just kind of disregard the negative signs at this point in the problem and just think of the problem as the square root of 8 times the square root of 40. All right, now the next thing we need to do is we need to look at each individual uh, numbers underneath these square roots and we need to uh, examine the factors of these numbers all right now what is a factor of a number well here is eight the factors of eight are four and two and one and eight all right so the, these numbers when you multiply them together we get back to that number so we call these numbers factors so we're looking for very specific factors okay now sometimes numbers have these factors sometimes uh, they do not okay all depends of course on the number now what factors am i talking about well i'm talking about perfect squared uh, factors all right and here are the numbers we're looking for okay as factors of a number so uh, four okay is one nine uh, 16 25 now look at the pattern here okay uh, why would i be interested in, in these numbers well because when i take the square root of these respective numbers, I get these beautiful little uh, whole numbers, right? Like the square root of four is two, square root of uh, nine is three, square root of 16 is four, square root of 25 is five, and on and on and on. So when we're looking at factors of these respective numbers, we're asking ourselves, 
hey, do uh, these numbers have any perfect square factors? Because if they do, we want to rewrite these um, uh, values as uh, products of um, a perfect square factor and whatever else, right? So let's take a look at 8 here. So 8 I can write as 4 times 2. Okay, I'm like, oh, wow, that's great because 4 is a perfect square factor. And 40 I can uh, write as 4 times 10. Again, 4 is a perfect square factor. Now, what you want to do is use the biggest perfect square factor when you recognize it. Now, if there, uh, if you can't remember or if you just don't recognize, you know, the uh, bigger perfect square factor that actually, you know, is a factor of that number, don't worry about it. Just, you know, just start simplifying little by little. But you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have the square root of 8. That's equal to the square root of 4 times 2, okay? And the square root of 40 is equal to the square root of 4 times 10. Now, at this uh, next step, this is something incredibly valuable uh, that we can do in algebra. Are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons? Maybe the teacher's not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast. Well, there is a better way. So come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. There you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success. So make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description. So here I have the one big square root over these factors. What you're allowed to do in algebra is break up these factors and uh, with their own individual square roots. Okay, so you can see here, instead of one big square root over four times two, I can actually write this as the square root of four times the square root of two. Now, why is that important? Because right here, the square root of four I know is two. This is how we simplify this number. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Square root of four is two. So two, okay, square root of four again is two. Two times the square root of two is obviously two square root of two. But we're multiplying it, this by the square root of 40, which is the same thing as square root of uh, four times 10. Again, we're gonna break up this big square root into two small square roots. And here I have my lovely perfect square factor. Square root of four is two. So this is gonna be two square root of 10. All right, now at this point, we're like, okay, we got some momentum and we're like, what do we do now? Well, we're not done, okay? We're, we're well on our way. So now we need to multiply these two uh, uh, square roots. So what we do is we multiply the outside numbers. Two times two, of course, is four. And then the square root of two times the square root of 10 is we're kind of doing the reverse of breaking up uh, one big, um, uh, we're kind of basically going this way, right? When you have two individual square roots, we can also rewrite that as one big square root. And that's what we're doing here. So the square root of two times the square root of 10 is gonna be the square root of 20. All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you. And if you're like, yep, I got this. Now, if you are struggling at this point, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on square roots and radicals. Uh, but I would strongly suggest you probably check out like my Algebra 1 course if you want full, complete instruction on this. All right, so if some of you got this as your answer, I would definitely give you a nice little happy face. But you're not done. Okay, and you're saying, what are you talking about? I'm not done. You know, this looks right. You know, I did everything you told me to do. Well, not so quick because when we simplify this, we have this square root of 20. We always have to ask ourselves, hey, are there any more perfect square factors uh, that we, we could take out? And sometimes you, they don't show up until, you know, we, you know, we're in the middle of the problem. Then now you have a new situation where you have to kind of like see if you can simplify your answer. And that's very, very common in algebra. But in here, indeed, we do have another perfect square factor. So here is our situation, 4 square root of 20. So obviously that's 4 square root of 20. Again, we can write as uh, the square root of 4 times 5, right? That is, of course, 20. And we're looking for those perfect square factors, and we have one there, 4, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and break up these individual square roots. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, again, square root of four, that uh, uh, is a nice, beautiful, perfect square factor. That's going to be two, right? So now we have four times two, which is eight times the square root of five. And this is the fully simplified answer. 
So again, stuff that you absolutely need to know uh, in algebra, learning how to work with uh, square roots and radicals and, and whatnot. Um, there's going to be plenty of times uh, when you are taking a test or exam uh, in any math course that you're not going to be allowed to use your calculator. So if you thought, yeah, hey, I can just get my calculator out and you know create some decimals here and you know just kind of do all that, well, yes, sometimes you need to do that, but that's not what we're talking about here. Okay, and this is a basic algebra skill. So again, if you need additional help with this, make sure you get it because you will definitely see this if you continue to learn mathematics at this level. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.